ham radio, make it yours. My point is, consider everything I said today, but go out there and form and articulate your own opinions. What is going on, everybody? Hey, thanks for checking out the channel. Today's question of the day is, can we activate a park, Parks on the Air activation, with this cheap-ass two-meter Baofeng radio? Well, I'll have an answer for you at the end of the episode, but the heart of this video today is to show you and maybe teach you a little bit about the skills that you could acquire while utilizing amateur radio, ham radio, or more importantly, while you go out and you do parks on the air. And hey, I also want to note that this video probably isn't for everybody. I'm more focused on getting people involved in amateur radio and having a good time. So if you're one of those people who like to critique every single thing somebody does because they didn't do it by a book, that's not me. Go find another channel if you'd like, or maybe more importantly, if you're like that, go make your own channel. I think you'll have a good time and you probably will attract some people. So let's get started talking about parks on the air and this cheap ass two meter radio, which I got for $5.99. So the first rule about activating a park is whenever you park, don't forget to lock your door. Uh, shoot. So I made some notes today and we have three things that we're gonna really hit on while we talk about parks on the air activations. And we're gonna hit on it throughout pretty much the whole episode, but keep these in your mind. Overcoming obstacles, learning your resources, and developing better habits, as well as becoming more familiar with your surroundings and your equipment. Understanding your equipment is an interesting thing because you could sit down at home and you can say, okay, I know how to program my radio. I understand the basic, char basic characteristics of my radio, but there are some things that when you get out in the field, maybe you never prepared for. Just like in the military, doing things multiple times and repetitively as you would be doing them in a real world scenario, is kind of a great thing for your, what they call muscle memory. And it takes thousands of times to do something to potential perfection, if you will. It's just the same with communications. You know, we, we learn our radio at home, we understand the basics, but now we get out here and we start to realize things that maybe we didn't realize before, like, oh, I didn't realize I didn't need a PL tone on simplex. Or, uh, you know, maybe another great one is, I didn't realize my battery was gonna die so quickly on my Yezu FT70. Things like this. The, we start to learn things and then we could adapt from them and we could change them for the next time we come out here. And that way if we ever do need to use our equipment, our gear and all that good stuff, we're so familiar with it that it will be comfortable. Uh, the next thing today, and pardon the waves, but the next thing today is to learn how to be prepared. The first time you come out and you do a parks on the activation with a Baofeng 2 meter radio, you might realize you forgot your Baofeng 2 meter radio, or perhaps you forgot your antenna. Maybe you had it off the radio for some reason. And you get out here and you realize you, I don't like to use the word failed, but you didn't succeed in your activation because you had forgot equipment. And the whole point of being prepared is sometimes writing down things like lists, as well as maybe having a checklist before, the night before or the morning of, to go through and make sure you have all your gear or have a bag that your gear always stays in with no exceptions. And that's the thing that you learn. You learn how to be prepared so that you can grab and go if you needed to. And some of the other things it might teach you, especially if you're going out and you're gonna activate with a little Baofeng radio, it's gonna teach you to maybe check your terrain beforehand, also to let people know your plan. Somebody needs to know where you're gonna be just for safety purposes. And then we start to get into, well, nobody's hearing me on simplex, I made no contacts. And you start to think, what could I have done different? And maybe you start to think in order to do something different, next time I'll be prepared with the repeaters in this area that I'm at programmed into the radio. Although you can't activate parks on the air on a repeater, you could go on a repeater and ask people to try you on simplex, and perhaps that's your best bet. Or maybe you do know people in that area. Maybe you're part of a club. Maybe you let them know, hey, I'm planning on being out at parks on the air at this location, at this date and this time. Could you listen for me on that repeater or on simplex? And I say on that repeater because maybe, maybe you can't get them on simplex and maybe you go onto the repeater and they say yeah we didn't hear you at least then you know hey i'm not making it that far or quite that far so there are those things that you could do and of course you could always spot yourself on the parks in the air map but let's be honest here 
if you're activating two meters, 70 centimeters, the handy talkie radio, your distance will be limited. And it's based on a few things like a clear line of sight to Michigan, or maybe there's a lot of woods. Maybe you're at a high point, height is might. Clear line of sight is great. But I do want to mention weather is a critical thing. If you haven't seen the video about me in Florida, you might want to go check out the video about me in Florida because I was not prepared. And a good friend of mine, Alex, may have saved my life. If not, he definitely got me to safety. And that was me being arrogant and unaware of my conditions, my weather conditions. So I stress that, but I've also been through that. Those are things that you need to consider to be better prepared when we're talking about activating a park. And right now I'm on 146.52. I have high power and a fully charged battery. I'm gonna to try to make some contacts. And so today's plan, I think I am gonna do that as well. I'm gonna use my phone for logging, but I am also gonna spot myself on the Parks in the Air app, only because Michigan's not too far away. I don't know, 60 miles or so, which I probably wouldn't be able to get straight across because of the curvature of the earth. But if somebody maybe has a tall tower, who knows, right? Let's try it out. Hey, this is W9FFF, Whiskey 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. Wanting to do a Parks on the Air activation. Is this frequency in use? CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. It's Whiskey 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. W9FFF calling CQ Parks on the Air from Park Uniform Sierra 1000, US 1000. Nothing yet, but let's keep walking. Yeah, so another thing I really wanna talk about with being prepared real quick is having redundancy, redundant communications, redundant equipment, if you can, if it's feasible, because there's this expression that's when there's one, there's none. And if you're planning on one radio to never fail, hate to tell you this, but if this radio goes in that water, it may or may not work. However, knowing my environment and being prepared for today, maybe I have a backup radio that's uh, IP67 waterproof rated, which would be the safer bet. Hey, and let's just point out for a second, there's a lot about being prepared that I'm not covering and I'm not covering everything in the world. Hey, there is a lot to understand and consider about being prepared. How heavy your bag is, how far you're gonna be walking, do you have food, do you have the proper resources and so many things. But I'm kind of just in the more of the aspect of a few basic kind of things here, which kind of leads me into my next point, which is knowing your terrain. And it is kind of part about being prepared is, you need to know where you're going for your optimal communications. I mean, here I am, I could see clearly to the horizon line, but how far is that? How far am I gonna be able to contact and talk? What would happen if I, instead of sitting down here, I went up this small little hill a little bit? Height is might, and I might get just a little bit further out. I could see Chicago clearly, so you know maybe I could hit one of those repeaters and I could talk to a guy and say, hey, would you try me on Simplex or maybe you have a beam. Knowing your terrain is a critical thing when it comes to great communications in VHF, UHF, and trying to activate with a cheap radio. And you know, maybe that's the next thing we kind of discuss about is taking your experiences and not only learning from your experiences, taking them as an opportunity to, to grow to grow and to learn and to better improve yourself for the next activation. Damn it, I hope I make a contact. In the air, CQ Parks in the air, W9, FFF. W9, FFF. Uh, let me get to somewhere quiet. But every day in amateur radio, every day in your actual real life, it's an opportunity to do a little bit better, to grow, to become stronger at what it is you're trying to accomplish. And through those things I've talked about, like muscle memory, being prepared, knowing your surroundings, knowing your terrain, those are all critical things about growing with what we're doing. But if you didn't have muscle memory, you wouldn't have the ability for your fine motor skills. My point on that though is this, when you start to perfect these skills and you start to hone in on what it is you did wrong and what it is you could do better to improve on yourself or your radio habits, you will become better rounded. Things will become easier to inhale and digest. 
you'll become more confident on the mic. And those are some of the most important things that you might need to know. If there was ever a situation that you needed to use your radio, you're gonna to wanna to be confident on the mic. You're gonna to wanna to be confident with your radio and know how to use it. And that's why getting out to do parks in the air, even if you failed your activation, it's not a bad day. Failed your activation, by the way. Whiskey 9, Fox, 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 W9, FFF from Park US, 1000. Hey, this conclusion is going to be a little bit different, and I hope I can maintain a, you know, a, a straight path for you. Because there's a lot to dissect from what I just talked about, and it applies not only to amateur radio, but it also applies to your personal life. So take that as it is. But today, I was unsuccessful at making an activation with my cheap-ass Baofeng radio. Does that mean it's impossible to activate 2 meters, 70 centimeters parks on the air with a cheap-ass Baofeng radio? And the answer is absolutely not. To some of you, this might sound obvious. However, to some of you here on like the third coast, for example, or places where there's not a lot of 2 meter simplex activity... Maybe that didn't seem obvious, and now you know, you've learned a little bit, especially when you get out there and you test yourself. And I think that that is an important thing that I want to kind of harp on during this whole episode today. I gave you advice, suggestions, and tips to better yourself, be prepared, have redundant comms, uh, and everything else I spoke about. But realistically, it's at the end of the day, there's going to be people in amateur radio telling you all the time, that's not possible, or... Uh, that's a cheap ass radio it will never work but realistically at the end of the day they may or may not know take their word for just that maybe some advice and go test yourself because what you might find is that this radio works perfect for you or you might find that you're constantly in the water and maybe you want a ip67 rated radio or maybe you want a radio that potentially floats i'm not aware of any with amateur radio you can go onto my comments and you could read the very hateful comments because maybe I didn't know something or I didn't do something by the book. And this might help you. When we criticize others for testing things that aren't by the book, we've also lost the true art of experimentation. I'm sure great minds like Tesla sometimes, but only sometimes, <laughs> thought outside of the box and tested and also challenged those theories for a better understanding. And I hope that, that my point comes across there that without testing theories and challenging theories, we will never fully develop and grow as a society or in our electronics or whatever we're trying to do. And so that's why this summer I'm making it a point to live by a quote that's ham radio, make it yours. My point is consider everything I said today, but go out there and form and articulate your own opinions. Make ham radio yours. I hope you enjoy the summer. Thanks for watching.